show us the Father. The disciples asked Jesus, they said, show us the Father, Jesus. In John the 14th chapter, the 8th verse, Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father and it will satisfy us. Jesus said unto him, have I been so long with you that you hast not known me, Philip? He that has seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believe thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Jesus is again showing that he doesn't do anything in and of himself. He is so closely connected to the Father that when you look at him, you see the Father. Everything that he does is to please the Father. And he abides in his Father. And he tells us, he says, to abide in him. In the book of J John 15, 7, if you abide in me and, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and that shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that you love one another. He's giving us instruction again right here. He's showing us how he's connected to God and how we're connected to him, and through that we are connected to God. And we're always asking God for things. And he says in verse 7, he says, You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. We're always asking God for things, but most of the time we don't get what we ask for. Why? Because he's telling us. He says, If you abide in me, if you keep my commandments, this is my commandment, that you love one another. In verse 17, these things I command you, that you love one another. In the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter, the 22nd verse, Jesus is saying that many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works, and then I will profess to them I never knew you. You need to see that Jesus gave us one commandment, and that commandment is that we love one another. One commandment is all that he's given us, that we love one another. Remember the guy at that wedding feast? He was sitting around his brothers and sisters, and no one knew. No one knew because he looked all right. No one knew because he talked right. No one knew because he acted right. We do all these things, make all the right moves, but too often the Christianity that we portray before people are like the clothes that this young man was wearing. If the foundation for your walk isn't love, if the foundation for your talk isn't love, if the foundation for whatever you're doing for God, no matter how great it is, if love isn't the foundation, you're wearing the wrong clothing. If love isn't the motivation, the clothes you're wearing, your Christianity, your Christian walk, your Christian talk, your ministry will be just that, your ministry, and not God's, and it will profit you nothing. Many will say unto me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, and in thy name cast out devils, and, and done all kinds of wonderful works in your name. 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, the first through the third verse, Paul is talking to the church at Corinth. And he says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me nothing. What God is doing is using Paul to address the words that Jesus spoke some years ago that are transcribed in the book of Matthew, the seventh verse. The book of Matthew, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Prophecy is very important to the body of Christ. But Paul is saying, and though I have the gift of prophecy, if I don't have love, I have nothing. They said, Lord, Lord, in your name, haven't we cast out devils and, and in your name done many wonderful works? But Paul says, I can understand all mysteries and all knowledge and could move mountains. And even if I gave all of my goods to feed the poor, if I don't have love, it profits me nothing. The key is right here. This is the key to everyone in the church, whether we're ministers or lay people. The key to any kind of real blessing that God has for you all revolves around you functioning within the parameters of the agenda of God, which is why he sent Jesus in the first place. It's not about denominations. It's not about a particular local church. It's not about my ministry. It's not about local, it's not about uh, denominational nitpicking doctrinal issues, my belief system. It's about nothing. It all has to do with love. It's all about love. 
And if we don't have love, he says, all these things we can do. We can move mountains, but if we don't have love. We can have all knowledge, but if we don't have love. We can know all mysteries, but if we don't have love. We can cast out devils. But if the foundation isn't love, eventually the king is going to come, and we're going to be sitting there thinking we've been doing God's will, doing all this stuff, but we've been wearing our own clothes. Whose clothes am I wearing? Whose clothes are you wearing? It's interesting to me that Jesus said he follows the commandments of his Father, but this one commandment I give you, that you love one another. Now, Jesus had earlier told us when he was questioned, when he was questioned which are the greatest commandments, Jesus said that you love God with all of your heart and that you love your neighbor as yourself. Now, some could look at this and see a contradiction in what Jesus is saying here, but I don't because I remember when God told us in his word that if you can't love those that I created, you surely can't love me. Jesus knows the problem that we have in this area of selfishness. Jesus knows the problem that we have in this area of preferring our brothers over ourselves or preferring our sisters over ourselves. But if we can just get past that, if we can just find our way to love one another, we'll love God. So Jesus is just not saying we need to love God. He's just trying to get us to love each other. Love your neighbor. Love those that God created. If you can't do that, there's no way that you can love God. We must regain sight of God's desires. We must regain sight of God's agendas. If we don't regain the agenda of God, it doesn't matter what we do. Just like Paul said, if there is no love, there is no real profit. And like Jesus said, you'll be standing there on that last day saying, Lord, Lord, I thought I was doing what I was supposed to do. So my encouragement to you is to love one another. And I know this is difficult. As for me, I didn't know how to really love. When I was in the world, I didn't know how to love. And I hurt a lot of people. When I got saved and was in the church, I didn't know how to love. And I hurt a lot of people. We in the church are cutting up Christians left and right, destroying the body of Christ from within because we either don't know what love is and we find a very difficult time showing it. So we need to begin to focus on that love. So I can tell you, I can say, well, just love everybody. And you can say, okay, because that makes sense. But you'll walk out of here saying, well, how do I do that? We want to get in the flow of what God is doing already, right? That's what we want. That's what I want. We need to get in line with what God is already doing. It's so easy to look at our situation and start praying for the things that we want. We're human beings. We're good people. And we believe we know what we want. But God truly knows what you need. We're always asking for stuff, stuff that may not always fall in line with God's agenda. It may be seemingly good stuff, but it may not be exactly in line with God's plan. I say this, God tells us to love one another. Ask God to give you the love that he, that he has for your brothers and sisters. Ask God to give you the love that he has for the lost. Ask God to give you the love that he has for your family members that might be giving you a hard time. He will. See, we focus on God changing folks so we can love them. But if that was a prerequisite, God would have never sent Jesus. We need to possess God's attitude. We need to possess God's love. So all this that you need from God, just ask him for it. We have to have it. Because if we don't have the love that we're supposed to have, we won't have the proper clothing on. I can be in ministry. I can preach here. I can preach there. It doesn't matter who I am. It doesn't matter what I do. But if I don't have love... I'm going to be caught in that last day saying, Lord, Lord, I thought I was okay. And he'll say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Now, see, this, this probably isn't going to be a sentence to hell. Iniquity simply means unrighteousness or not like God. But the sentence is, is going to be, depart from me uh, into outer darkness, into obscurity, into non-recognition. Into non and there's going to be weeping and a gnashing of teeth, deep regret. Imagine, just imagine living all our lives, 5, 10, 15, 20 years, however, doing what we're doing, thinking we're good Christians, ministering in the people's lives, working in this department, that department, telling people about Christ, doing all these good things and expecting a great reward in heaven because I'm doing all that I'm supposed to be doing. And God says, you didn't do what I told you to do. And God, the creator of the universe, the God you thought you were serving, he snubs his nose at you right there. You won't have to go to hell to feel that intense weeping and gnashing of teeth. I know my own son. Once he did something that he wasn't supposed to do, and I told him, I said, son, I'm very disappointed in you. And it hurt him to his heart. And I'd never say that to him again. But it, it, just imagine God telling us that. 
Like I've been ministering for about five years now. Suppose I think I got it all together. I'm making all the right moves, looking for God to give me this great, great reward, and I'm standing before God, waiting for him to affirm me because I've been a warrior.